Alright, this is an energy project that I was working on. I had a couple of these solenoid coils laying around. They had a half inch bore, I took them all apart. Luckily I had this piece of half inch brass tubing I got at the hobby shop. And what I decided to do was make a little push-pull generator. It's very similar to the ones that you see for the shake lights, but the only problem is with the shake light, after a while of doing that, you get tired of shaking. With this, I decided to make it a push-pull, and it's so much easier just to hold it and go like that. It's like pumping something up. You just go like that, you just pump it up. Now right now, I don't have to go that fast. If I, I can actually go slow like this, and it builds a charge very quickly. What I did, I connected both solenoid coils in series. Now only one was going to give me about a 6 volt DC output. So I put two together in series and then I took the output, ran it through a rectifier, a full wave bridge rectifier that I made out of some 1N4001 diodes. And after the diodes it feeds into a 16 volt 3300 microfarad capacitor. Now I don't have any super caps laying around but I did order some and when I get them I'm going to use it with this unit because it will charge those super caps very quickly. I'm going to demonstrate in a minute this is a huge 3, uh, 37,000 microfarad capacitor just to show you now this doesn't charge as quickly as the super cap but it will charge up. So I'm going to demonstrate how you can use this. But how it works, rather than shaking it like a shake light, which is a pain in the ass shaking it, you just hold this with one hand and you just push it in and out like this. Right now at this speed, I'm charging. Now if this had a good super cap in it, as I'm doing this, I'd be charging the super cap. I could store that energy, just like a shake light. Let me show you the spark first. So let's do that one. Alright, you see a spark here. It charges it pretty good. Alright. Now if this was a super cap, it would charge a lot faster than this standard electrolytic. So that's why I can't wait to get that. But this will be a very handy device in the event you need some power but you don't have it. So say you have a cell phone that's dead, you could charge up a really big super cap and use that to power your cell phone if you had to make an emergency phone call or something. It would give you just enough power to do what you have to do to make that one call. Or you could just sit there for a while and do this, you could charge it up. But this has a lot more uses than a shake light. You could use it for a light, you could use it for charging things. What I did, there's a rubber bumper in the end. I soldered this plate across so nothing can come out this way, the, the magnets. Took a skinny screwdriver, a Phillips, slid a brass tube over it, and then I flared open the end of the, the brass and I bonded it to the half inch by three quarter cylindrical magnet that's inside. Neodymium, I think it's an N38. You could use a higher strength like an N42 or N50, whatever they have, and you'll have more current due to the higher magnetic field. And it's very simple how it works. One end of the magnet, which is right here right now, is north, and the other end is south. And when the magnetic field alternates, now it goes in north, and then on the way back is south, so it's changing back and forth. So when you're doing that, you're going north-south, north-south, north-south and you're producing alternating current which is then converted by the rectifier that I have in here which is four one N four oh oh ones to make a bridge rectifier and this capacitor right here which that smooths the ripples out and then you get your output so you have alternating current from the north south of the magnet and then it's converted into direct current okay what I'm going to do now is a 10, 10 millimeter LED right here Look, just by when I pull it out once, on, push it in, on. It puts out a good amount of current, this little thing. 
All right, so now it runs that. Now, if I have a super cap, I could pump this a few times, and after it's charged, it would run this LED for quite a while. Now, I want to build up a little bit of reserve. I got this capacitor right here, this big one, electrolytic. I got this little fan right here. <clears throat> we're going to do, I'm going to pump this to charge the cap and that's going to run the fan. All right, so we have a cap right here, a little mini case fan, 12 volt. This puts out roughly 12 volts. So I'm going to pump this up. Once the capacitor is charged, it won't be fully, but it'll be charged. I'll connect it, and then you'll see the case fan come on. It up. It's really easy to do. It's so much easier than shaking a, a damn flashlight. Just hold it in one hand, just push it with the other. You could do this all day long. It's it's not it's not hard to do. It doesn't you don't have to go fast. Very easy like this. Keep pumping it up. Now connect it and the fan will come on. There you go, she's running. Let go. She's still running. I'm going to let go now. Okay, we're going to try a big fan. Do the same routine. I'm going to pump charge the capacitor. Once I think it's charged enough, I'll connect the ground to the cap, and that fan should come on. Now the plunger can't pull out of the end because I have a stop on it, and it can only go so far into the other end. So as long as the magnet goes through the coils and back out of the coils, you're getting the alternating magnetic field that you need to create the DC current. Now super cap would charge really quickly in in comparison to the regular electrolytic, especially this old one that I have laying around right here. Okay, let me just touch it and see how we go. There you go. Let go. Disconnect. Neat little thing. Not much to it. Each one of these solenoids has roughly, I think, 30 gauge wire on it. Full spool. It's roughly, all right, it is roughly about an inch and three quarters in diameter. And about each, each uh, solenoid spool is about one and a quarter wide by one and three quarters in diameter. And it's wound in 30 gauge, just uh, one winding. And when each winding is done, you connect it to the other one. Uh, make sure the turns are going in the right direction when you connect them in series. If you don't get higher voltage, just reverse one of the coils leads and then try it again. This is all soldered. There's a rubber seal in here, so when I pull it out, it hits that rubber seal. That's it.